Good morning guys. Well, it's been a while since I've done a garden update, so I thought I'd do one. Um, it's been rainy season, we've had some typhoons come through, um, so the garden wasn't looking at its best, but uh, I think now we're coming into um, winter here in the Philippines, which isn't really that cold, but uh, the rainy season's over, it's the cooler time of year, and uh, we'll be heading towards summer, so I think that the garden now um, has chance to kind of recover from rainy season and the dark days um, where it's cloudy, they don't get a lot of sun, the plants didn't look at their best. So here's an update of how things are looking now. So here at the front of the house, um, we had planted down here um, earlier some alocasia, um, green dragons, and so on and they just weren't doing well i think they weren't getting quite enough sun here now maybe during the summer they would have been okay but um i've replaced these now with some of these lovely calatheas um which have a really nice um kind of sheen to them especially when the sun reflects off of them they're they're very glossy very shiny leaves so um i've planted a row of those along here this calathea was also doing well, so I left it um, in place. And then up here, we've got our uh, um, variegated alocasia, uh, elephant ear albo. And this has been having pups. So down here, um, you can see this was uh, a baby that came from the, from the mother plant there. It just popped up and Way, way down there, you can see there's another baby coming out. Um, don't know how well that'll do, might not get enough light, but but we got this one that came out from there. So that's filling up this area nicely. Um, this is our, our fiddle leaf fig tree, which is uh, producing some new leaves and is growing here. Although this area does suffer a little bit from wind, so um, you can see it's growing at a bit of a funny angle. Um, moving over here, we've got our Dark Lord, which um, is doing well here. Uh, it's a little bit crowded in this area, um, but once this Dark Lord gets higher up on, on the pole that it's got there, it'll be a little bit easier to walk past, and you'll see more of these leaves. So, as I say, it's a bit windy in this area, so these have got beaten up, and, you know, we've had some typhoons come through, which have not been nice to some of the leaves um this is new one just opened up um so it's really quite large this dark lord is really upsized quite a lot from um before when it was inside of the house it really likes it out here a lot better um these are our alocasia black magics we've got some baby ones growing there so these kind of just self-propagate and spread themselves around they send out runners over the ground and then you'll get get them popping up in other places so we've got more here um so those black magic seem to be enjoying this area although they are growing a little leggy probably a sign that um they're not getting quite as much light as they would like the black magics do like a little bit more sun um here we've got uh syngonium which is really uh, spreading itself around. So uh, it just sent out runners and it started popping up here and over there, and even right over there as well. Um, so this is filling up the space, very quick growing. Um, so I don't think it'll be long before this pole is completely covered there. Now, some of you may remember we had a red Congo that got damaged um, something fell on it and snapped it. Um, so we've actually propagated it into two. And now we've got two surviving here. Um, so this red Congo has got a new leaf just starting to come out. You can see there. Um, so these these leaves have been new. And then this also has a new leaf coming out as well. Uh, so this was from our original red Congo that got snapped. And this was part of the red Congo that got snapped off. So we just planted them both here. Now we have two of them growing in this area. Um, we've got these ferns which have just sprung up. These are just wild ferns that have just 
you know, started growing here on their own. Um, now I have this turtle vine, which provides a kind of a ground cover for the area. Um, it's quite quick growing, um, and it and it will spread. You see, it's only starting to spread here because the grass was not um, not doing that that great, uh, as you can see. Um, partly, I think it's 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 not just doesn't get quite enough sun down this side of the house here. Um, so the grass was not growing great, but this turtle vine doesn't require a lot of grass. So I'm just going to let this spread. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of light, so I'm just going to let it spread over here. And we've also got some more ferns popping up there. So now we've got the living wall here at the side of the house, um, which is doing well. Um, so we've got our philodendron tabapensi here, which is a kind of spiritus sancti lookalike. Um, so when we got it, it was this one, the older leaves down there. So you see it's starting to upsize. It's climbing up the wall nicely here. Um, over here, we've got our Anthurium forgetii white stripe. Uh, so uh, this just got a, a spadex come out on it. Um, so it has two leaves. I think maybe we have another one starting to shoot there. Um, so that's doing well. We have a marble queen pothos here, which is also starting to climb up the wall. Our queen Anthurium. Is also here we have a new leaf coming out on that see here it's going to be a new leaf coming out on our queen anthurium um, so this has been doing quite well here because this side of the house it just doesn't get um, too much Sun um, but it gets just enough light I think you know late evening um, it gets just enough light to to make the plants here happy so we also have here a monstera deliciosa uh, which has got a new leaf coming out there. So that will start to grow up and fill some of this gap also. Here is our Jose Bueno um, variegated Jose Bueno there you see some light variegation to the leaf. It did have more variegation earlier on as the leaves have got bigger they seem to have lost a little bit of their variegation but they're still there. Um, there's another new leaf coming out um, so that is also growing up here and uh, it's not growing too leggy, so it's, uh, it's okay. It looks, looks quite nice in this area. Um, down here we have a Burley Marks and I think behind this Burley Marks here, we've got an El Choco. Yeah, this is our, uh, El Choco Red here, um, which has got a few leaves on it. Uh, this has been a very, very slow grower, even in an area where it's got more light. I found it to be very slow growing. Um, so it's our El Choco there and here. Got more Anthuriums that are really loving this area, filling up the space. And, uh, and then growing up here, we've got our Philodendron. Um, I think this is called a Fiddle Leaf Lime or something. A Fiddle Fig Lime. Some, a Fiddle Leaf Lime. Um, it has a new a new shoot coming out. So there's lots of new leaves coming out because I guess the time of year, as I say, we're kind of starting to get a little bit more sun or it's not a sunny day today, but we're starting to get some sunnier days. Um, it's a philodendron majestic. I don't know what happened to this latest leaf that just came out. Um, it's a little bit messed up. I don't know if an insect got to it or something and chewed on it, but, uh, yeah, this is uh, the Majestic. Now we have a cutting from that, which I'll show you shortly. It's growing in another area. And over here we have a variegated Burley Marks and also as well a Anthurium Vicii. So this Vicii is um, not a narrow form. This this is a kind of wide form Vicii. I have a narrow form at the back um, growing on the living wall at the back. So this is our newer Vicii and this leaf just opened you can see it's still quite soft. Uh, it has to be very delicate with these uh, anthuriums. These vecchiai leaves, I find, are very easy to tear when they are just unfurled. So you have to be careful with those. 
Now along the side here, uh, we have a Philodendron Olympiad, which has a new leaf coming out also. Again, another sign that we're kind of coming into a growing season. We've got a um, Philodendron Prince of Orange here. Now I've got two Prince of Oranges. The other one here, we've had this for a while and it just doesn't get bigger. It's kind of a dwarf type or something. It, it really doesn't grow that well. But I've just got this new one a couple of weeks ago, which also has a new leaf coming out. And uh, hopefully then that will grow to a more reasonable size like our Black Cardinal has been here. Now, one problem on this side of the house is um, it does get quite damp at this side of the house, especially during heavy rains. And it doesn't get a whole lot of sun to dry it out. So I think that some of the philodendrons in the ground here have suffered a little bit um, from too much water uh, during the rainy season. Um, so I tried to raise these beds a little bit so that uh, you know the water would run away and they wouldn't be sitting in the water, but yeah, they don't look the healthiest, um, but I'm hoping that just during the, the summer, they will they will bounce back. Inside of here, I have some propagations going on. So this tiny little thing here, that is a um, Monstera oblique. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that. I'm not sure it will, there we go. So that is a oblique um, grown from a, a chunk. And we'll see how that goes, uh, whether we will get anything useful from that. Um, it's been there a while, but it's not dead. So I just leave it there growing. And also here then we have some propagations of, I uh, guess this is a philodendron. Um, of some sort, I don't remember what that is that I put in here. Okay, so down the side here then, we've had a, an awful lot of um, ferns just spring up. So these are just wild natural ferns that have been growing here. Um, they just self-propagated themselves, started growing, so I left them here. They're quite happy and they fill this area, so why not? Again, the grass here isn't that healthy anyway because we don't get a whole lot of sun. So I just let those ferns grow there. Down here we have um, a few things. So this here is a Epiprenum Sabu, I think. Um, see, it was variegated, but it's lost its variegation as it's grown. I'm not sure why. And then this here is a, a Philodendron Mamii. Um, silver cloud, I think that one is called. Um, we've got a, another philodendron type growing down here, a bipenfolium, I think this one is called. Um, so that's still kind of juvenile. This was taken from a cutting of uh, a large one that we have at the back. So this is a uh, very old leaf that was from the cutting, but you see now it's got a shoot coming out. Um, so this has been um, probably three to four months before we got this shoot here. So that goes to show, you know, when you take these cuttings, don't give up on them. You know, a few times I thought, ah, uh, this isn't gonna do anything. I'm just gonna pull it out and throw it away. But I, let, I just left it here and it took three to four months, but eventually we got this shoot coming out and now, you know, we've got a, we've got a propagation there. So don't give up on your propagations, guys, um, especially you know, cuttings like this, you may see no growth for quite some time, but then you'll just see something come out. So don't give up on them, leave them um, alone and eventually you'll get something coming out. So philodendron um, tenu, I think this one is called. Um, so it's kind of a roundish uh, type shape, but it's got that ribbing to it, a bit like what you would see um, on a Richii. And then down here, this is a cutting from uh, Philodendron Majestic that's on the living wall. Um, so again, this has not been here that long yet, um, maybe only a month. So just leave the cuttings, it's not dying. You can see the leaves are still healthy. So just leave the cuttings as they are and just let them grow. And uh, eventually you'll, you, you, you'll see something coming out from that. Okay. Head around here. So, 
Um, up here, we have a Choco Empress. So this is waiting to be put somewhere. Um, so I'm just leaving it here in the pot for now. But this Philodendron Choco Empress is going to go on um, our, one of our living walls. Um, probably the one at the rear, once I make some space for it. Um, there's some other nice things growing here. I like this. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I really love the leaves on it. Like a camouflage effect. Um, so I really like that. Yes, I'm not a, a botanist by any means, so I don't know the names of all of the plants. You know, sometimes I just go out to the stores and I see something and I think that would look really cool. And, and, and so I buy it. So if anyone could ID this for me, that would be great. Um, now then, we'll head down here. So we've got um, a variegated banana here, which um, has just been self-propagating and filled this area. It was just one stem when we got it, but, but now it's got plenty of, of stems coming out from here this variegated banana. Um, we've got another type of um, plant here, which is similar to the, to the other one that I just showed you. I think it's the same type of species, but different coloration to the leaves. Um, we've got more black magics growing here, and this caladium just sprung up. So the bulb must have been in the soil somewhere. I took this soil from somewhere else in the garden when I did the pot. The caladium, uh, the caladium must have been hiding there in the soil and then it's just sprung out. Here we have our Anthurium Big Bill, which is starting to live up to its name. So this is the largest Anthurium species that you can get. It's not obviously full size yet. Um, I haven't had it that long, only a few months. Um, so you see the leaves were this size. Um, my, my hand would cover them and now it's this size. And uh, this one hasn't finished upsizing yet. Um, this is only just unfurled, so this will get really huge. Uh, the big bills, they, they will really, need, it will need a lot more space and it will need a much bigger pot eventually. So our living wall at the back, um, so this got really quite beat up um, during the um, typhoons that we've had, but uh, it's kind of, kind of survived. I mean, I'm, su I'm surprised that these larger leaves didn't really get damaged um so the beate has done really well you can see uh the beate leaves are really quite large now um poking out behind here we've got a new anthurium leaf that's just opened up we've also got our regali here which i think has a new shoot so maybe in a few weeks we'll have a new regali there um this one i think it's anthurium dracanapaterum or something like that is pronounced um but i really like it really cool shape with these you know, funky lobes so that also has new growth coming out of it um, our monstera deliciosa at the back here is also doing really well so this has just um, opened up this new leaf again this is a really large leaf so everything seems to be upsizing quite quite nicely um, we added an anthurium luxurians they've got it up on the wall here possibly the Monstera is going to um, overcrowd it and I'll need to move it eventually, but uh, this is really cool. I love Anthurium Luxurians. It was one of my kind of uh, wish list plants and I eventually got it, but I really love the, the crinkly um, texture to the leaves. They're really amazing. I really, really like those. Up at the top here, we have our um, Vichii narrow form there. So we had the wide form at the other side, and this is our narrow form vitii. That's the latest leaf. It's got a little bit of damage on the left of it, you can see. Um, that was from the uh, recent typhoon winds. But uh, it's, I was worried that that leaf was gonna get completely shredded because it only just opened up, and um, it was really quite strong winds, and they are delicate, but it survived with very minimal damage. Now, coming down here, we have our Florida Beauty and a variegated Florida Beauty. So this variegated one, we brought it arid naroids. Um, it's got really quite good genes. Although the variegation, as you can see, has kind of changed from this nice marbling to 
to something more like this. Um, and this one has come out. It looks like it's going to be pure white. Um, so, but uh, I really like it when it was this marble type type uh, type effect. Um, so we'll see if that comes back eventually. Um, now down here we've got our Spirit of Sancti. So those of you who've been following this channel for a while will know that the uh, this was grown from a seed. Um, I bought it probably now, I guess, nine months ago. Um, I recently repotted it to this larger pot and after doing that, it's come out with this beautiful leaf and you can see now it's really starting to head towards its um, Spiritus Sancti look. Um, whereas before we just had these these kind of seedling type leaves on there and um, you really couldn't tell what it was but now it's really starting to look like what it is which is the philodendron spirit of sanctity so the last leaf you can see was still a little wide not as long but this newest one has really come out in a lovely long form I'm starting to get the bunny ears there um, so i'm very excited about this over the coming 12 months i'm sure it's going to start looking really superb like like a spiritus should. So this back area here, I've done a lot of work on it recently. Um, got another anthurium type that I put here. It wasn't growing so well in another part of the garden, so I've transferred it to here. I think it will grow a little better. Gets a little more sun here. I put in this, I don't know what it is, but I thought it was really cool. So we've got a few of those filling in some of this space here. Um, we've got a cutting back there of a strawberry shake, which uh, I hope will grow nicely back there. Um, we've got a few other things over here. We've got an Anthurium Luxurians, which has a new growth, but you just can't see it right now. Um, I think over here we have a Patriciae, and there was a SP Columbia there, but it's dropped all its leaves, but there is still a little, a little growth there. So I'm hoping that the SP Columbia will, will survive. Moving over this way now, we've got more um, calatheas filling up this space. I got another plant here, which I uh, just put in as filler, filler plants. Um, and then from the front, um, earlier on, I said that we had um, no, um, golden um, um, green dragons, um, alocasia green dragons planted at the front. I moved them to here. They seem to be happier here. This is a dwarf red Congo. Uh, we've got some alocasia there, black velvet. And uh, there's some, some more alocasia black velvets back there. And then moving over in this direction, hiding away behind there, we've got a pastazanium. Um, so that looks like it's got some new growth just down at the bottom there. So we should have some new leaves on the pastazanium soon. And then down here, we've got a Dean McDowell, Philodendron Dean McDowell, surrounded by some other stuff. So I think this here is an Alocasia Jacqueline, I think it might be called. Um, really cool shape to the leaves and coloration. When this gets full size, um, they really look they really look really cool. So we've got a cutting here from a um, Philodendron um, Gloriosum. Uh, we'll see if it survives. This came from the wall. You can see it grown really leggy because um, it was suffering from from not too much light um, up on the up on the wall. Um, and behind the, here, going up here, we've got a golden dragon, oh green green dragon, philodendron green dragon. Um, this is the latest edition. So this is a spiritus uh, lookalike. Um, I've forgotten his name. I think it's, an, it's, it's a crossbreed with something in es Esmeraldes. Um, when this gets mature, the leaves are really beautiful. A kind of um, Spirit of Sancti look, but with some veining to them. And, and it's kind of almost green on green variegation. Um, it's a really beautiful looking plant once it gets mature. So I put that into into one of the um, nests. Those of you who've seen my other videos, you'll, you'll know how, how I make these. So um, it's basically take some fishing net and uh, 
sew it up, fill it up then with a good airy mix and put the plants in there. So this one now I've, I've put onto our um, tree fern there. So it can grow up the tree fern and probably be quite happy, I hope. Uh, also attached to the tree fern here, we have some orchids and then we've got our black beate here. So you can see the, the black beate, um, the stems are not quite as orange as they are on a normal beate. Um, and uh, the leaves, not quite as big and a little bit darker in green. So it's a cross of an atabapensi and a beate, I think, is, um, is how this is. This is done. Moving around here, we've got um, philodendron. Um, okay, this one's called Goeldii. So it's quite unique the way this comes out with um, with the leaves like this. And there's a new new growth just coming out there. Um, so it comes out and it comes, you know, the, when the leaf opens up, it comes out with multiple leaves on it. So that's quite unique. We've also got another green dragon here, which is starting to um, upsize, you see there, the leaves are getting quite large. Around here, we have um, Philodendron Compost Patanum, which uh, is just growing like a weed here, it's starting to get really large. Um, this is our Philodendron Royal Queen, which is doing quite nice. Um, we've got some Gloriosum here, we have a um, blood red banana. Uh, this is our Plamanii, it got a little bit beaten up during the winds. You can see here uh, basically the leaves got kind of snapped, the veins got damaged. Um, so that was a little sad, but uh, it does have new growth coming out now. Down here we have a new leaf coming, um, so that's nice. This is native to the Philippines, uh, so it's a local plant. This is a Alocasia um, zebrana, or Colocasia zebrana. It's called that, I guess, because of the, the patterning to the, to the um, stems there. Around here, then, we have a Soderoi af. Um, so this one survived the uh, typhoon a little bit better than the... Um, Plowmanii I did. It didn't get quite quite as beaten up by the winds and I think this does have some new growth also coming through here. So we should have a new um, leaf coming out on that soon. And over at the back there I've got a few things. So we've got some beates, um, quite small baby beates that are growing at the back there. If you can see it, it's down there. Um, so I'm hoping there in a couple of years, we should have some some more things filling up this gap. So it's the thing when you plant these gardens, you know, you have to um, you know be patient and wait because what you plant initially it may not look great because uh, you know they need to grow and they need to fill up the space. Um, so I do have something else down here. Yeah, this is another Plowmanii. So this is a Plowmanii black face. It's the latest leaf. So it came from a cutting. That was the original leaf from the cutting, and this is now its first um, leaf since since it was cut. So that's um, going to grow here, also fill up some of the space. So this area here will look a whole lot better in another few years when everything's grown. Um, there's another beate leaf down there, baby one. Uh, this stick is ready for that. So that's the update on... Uh, what's going on here in the garden and how our spiritus is doing. And um, you see it's mm, still a little bit cloudy today. It's not really a bright sunny day here in uh, Montala, but um, we are heading towards some sunnier days, which should also spur even more growth here in the garden. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.